Hi everyone, welcome to Edie's Craft Room. I'm Hannah Catherine Smith. Today we're going to be talking English paper piecing. This is my newest obsession and addition to the multitude of hobbies that I have going on all at one time. <laughs> I wouldn't have it any other way. I was intrigued by English paper piecing when I was watching some old videos of Tula Pink. She did them with Fat Quarter Shop and walked through all of the different steps and materials and tips and tricks on how to do it. And I absolutely loved the effect that this technique had on the different items that she created, particularly with quilts. And so I started browsing the English paper piecing quilt options out there and was honestly surprised that there aren't that many kits available for this technique, that it truly is something that people use their scraps for or just let their imagination run wild. Now that is awesome, but as a beginner, I wanted a little bit more direction. So instead of actually taking the beginner route, I decided to jump to the most advanced route as I typically do. When I start a hobby, I don't want to do something the beginner way. I want the best materials. I want the best end result. Um, and it's really funny how I just really get ahead of myself with these things. So I decided I was going to embark upon creating the insanity quilt. I was inspired by many other makers on Instagram who had posted their insanity quilts. My understanding is that this quilt was originally submitted from a sewist or a maker in, I believe, Australia, and it was published in an Australian quilting magazine years ago. I do believe there was a pattern for it at one time, but it's really hard to find it now. And so I'm just deciding to start out and using inspiration photos to help me on my journey. So I got my little set of tools and I am ready to go and start little by little on this insanity quilt. So here's a sneak peek into how a beginner is tackling the insanity quilt that is English paper piece. Okay, I just sprinted home from work. <laughs> Gumbo's just as excited as I am. I just sprinted home from work because I got a package notification. He's gonna open it before I do, but I am so excited. My English paper piecing stuff is here. So let's open it up together. Okay, I couldn't even look through anything until the cat got in the box. Goodness. Be careful. So uh, yeah, this is my current predicament. So please hold while I, yep, okay, thank you. Now we're good to go, okay. Ha ha. Okay, so first things first, I got some needles. These are the Nifty Needles by Lori Holt. They had really good reviews. So I'm really excited about sewing with these. Then I heard rave reviews from the English paper piecing queen herself, Tula Pink. So I got the Sue Daily fabric glue pen. Heard this really, really helps with saving time. Also, you can never have enough scissors, and I have been wanting these forever, but they are always out of stock because they're so popular. So I hit the jackpot. I got the Sweet Snips. These um, are fabric scissors, but also really good for uh, threads as well. They are from Fat Quarter Shop. So how cute are these? I'm really excited. I'm gonna add this to my kit. Speaking of kit, I love these Moda fab like project bags. So I got this small one. I think it's a five by eight size. I thought this would be great to carry around my EPP stuff. And um, I also, I love it because so many of the bags, like project bags, they are either mesh or they're fabric. And one time, sorry if this is TMI, but having a cat, um, my cat decided, actually you can see right here, to puke on my cross stitch stuff. Now, if any of you have cross stitched before, you know that they are very long labors of love. Thank goodness I had one of these. Um, this one looks like it's just mesh, but it is actually fully plastic because it they may clean up really easily and it could have just been a terrible disaster. So that's why I'm sold on these because I can see what's inside and it protects itself from the elements. <laughs> that's my sales pitch there. Okay, so I got these EPP iron-ons. 
I'll talk more about the project that I'm doing in a little bit, but these are half square hexes, or excuse me, half inch hexes. Um, and these apparently you iron on to the back of your fabric. And then once you do that, you don't need to actually remove them. Um, they kind of just work with your fabric. So I'm gonna test these out. If they end up not being a favorite, I will go to just the regular paper, but I thought these would be cool to try out. Also had really good reviews. Next up is this fabric. I got a charm square. This is the line Ellie from Brenda Riddle Designs for Moda Fabrics. And can't wait to show you what I have in mind and more of this fabric, uh, but I thought this was beautiful. Also, this is not EPP related, but um, I got this pattern. This is Spangled by Kim Deal. I thought this would be a great scrap quilt. Um, and I have been starting to acquire some scraps. So thought that this would be um, a great thing to have in my stash so I can start cutting up scraps for a greater purpose. Next up, I got this Fat Quarter Baby book. Um, my friends are starting to have babies, y'all, and it's so exciting. So um, I thought this would be super cute to have. Um, Kimberly did a video on this not too long ago, but I think it was closer to a year ago. And at that time I was like, oh, this doesn't apply to me, but now it does. So I'm gonna start making some baby quilts this year. So exciting. Also for English paper piecing, I got some neutral or fill thread. I'm gonna start trying to build up my thread supply. Um, I will start getting you know some more colors, but I thought that this would be a great place to start since the budget is not unlimited. I thought that was um, just kind of a good universal thread. Um, and then last but not least, I got the sew-in interfacing. This is from Lori Holt, and this is for the Mercantile Sampler Quilt Along, which you will see videos about coming soon. So yay, so exciting. Now let's talk about process. These are my charm pack squares, the little five inch squares of this Ellie fabric. It's so pretty. I love the colors and how soft and feminine this pattern is. I am just looking for a good option for the demonstration and I decided on this blue fabric here. Now, the way that you iron on these EPP iron on hexes is you turn your fabric right side down, wrong side up, and then you go ahead and place your hexagons on the fabric. Now, this is the part that I think is the most tricky with these iron-ons is figuring out which side is the sticky side and which side is the not sticky side. So I just went ahead and placed them about a centimeter apart. I'm able to get, I believe, four by four on this five inch square trying to use as much of my fabric as possible and really taking my time to make sure that I do have the right side down. The sides are just so similar. So that is one challenge with these is it does take a little bit to figure out where you can where you should put them and as you'll see I do make that mistake. The good thing is the adhesive is relatively mild so if it does get stuck to your iron, it will come off. It's not that big of a deal. And I'm very thankful for that because I did mess these up a couple of times. Once you have all of the hexagons down, you just give everything a quick press. And I like to do it on the side with the hexagons as well as on the right side up, just to give everything a little bit more heat and making sure everything is adhered as nicely as possible. From there, it's just a matter of cutting out all of the hexagons. So this is the way I do it. I just take my scissors and cut everything into rows and then cut those rows into squares. And that has worked well for me. Now you could go ahead and cut more specifically around the hexagons in a true hexagon shape. I don't do that. I like to save as much time as possible. And when you're talking over 10,000 half inch hexagons for this entire quilt, time is of the essence. 
let me tell you, I love this Sue Daily glue stick. There is just something about it that works so well. I love the shape, the size, the glue. It all works amazingly. I understand why this is just a cult classic product. Now you certainly could use a needle and thread to baste your English paper piecing. I do like that option just because I do feel like you need a tabletop or a hard surface to sit down and glue these hexagons down and not you don't always have that and that's the beauty of English paper piecing is that it is a portable craft so I do like that option but I do try and just use this glue stick because it is so easy and so fast and time is money right so I am enjoying this technique now one other challenge I have found with the iron on English paper piecing hexagons is because they are thin and almost fabric like I do get a little bit of inconsistency with those hexagons versus like using a cardboard piece or something a little bit thicker that is going to not bend as you baste your fabric. Um, so just another pro or con to consider if you are interested in purchasing these. Now, after I showed you my original haul, I did make some adjustments to my supply kit. The first being I went ahead and bought more colored thread. I felt that it would help hide my stitches a little bit better. And then the second being I did purchase some other needles. Although the needles, the Lori Holt needles I originally showed you were great, they were just a little bit too big for this craft. So I sized down and have been very happy with them. I also added some wonder clips to my stash to help keep everything together as I was sewing to take a little bit of tension off of my hands instead of like holding the pieces together. And I added some rubber thimbles, which I love and help extend my sewing time just a little bit longer. And as you can see, I have been fairly productive considering I just started this. I have all of my pieces together and have been working on my hexagons as well as piecing the diamonds that make up the center of the insanity quilt. Now for sewing my hexagons together, I take a little bit of thread from my spool. Tula suggests about the length of your fingertips to your elbow and for it to come off the spool in a specific direction, the direction so you're not going against the grain of the thread. Now these other needles I got, the hole is so small and thankfully I was able to thread it on like the second try on this video. Um, but I really have struggled a little bit with the smaller needles. So um, who knows, another needle purchase may be in my future. But I got it here for you guys without taking too much time and I'm ready to start stitching. So I just pick up two of my hexagons and then I put them right sides together to begin stitching. I also try and just match up the length as best as I can um, so that they're as accurate as possible since I mentioned that there is a little bit of inconsistency earlier with the iron-on EPP templates. Then I take my wonder clip and hold those together. This is such a great hack. Take some of that tension off of your hands and for crafters, our hands are so important because they are the tools that we use to make all of the beautiful things that we make. And then I just start stitching. So I love Tula Pink's suggestion at instead of knotting on your first stitch, she just basically does a loop and then uh, continue stitching down after that loop and then hides the tail in the seam. That has worked out really well for me. So all I do is just catch that tail in that loop, pull my needle through and really do it carefully. And then I can just stick my needle through the loop and that keeps it secure. And I do that at every single corner. She does a much better job of explaining it, um, but I have been using that technique and it seems to work really well. Then I just go through and put a few more stitches down the length of the hexagon. I'm trying to get about 10 stitches, maybe a little bit less, more like eight on this half inch. That might be a little much. It might be not enough depending upon who you are, but um, I think for me, I've found that this is a good amount. 
And it's really important just to be grabbing the like ba the thread of your fabric so you're hiding your stitches as much as possible. Now you will see your stitches and I think that's okay and part of what makes hand stitching so beautiful. Um, but this is, I think probably for me at least, the biggest learning curve of English paper piecing is not putting that needle with a larger seam allowance. It is putting that needle in just the very, very tip of the fabric. So I'm um, just trying to keep that hidden as much as possible. And that was also another reason why I decided to go ahead and spring for more thread colors just to try and help this beginner <laughs> with hiding her stitches as much as possible. Now, once I get to the end of the hexagon, I tie everything off just like I started it. And there you have it. And of course, this one seems to be the pairing that I'm showing the most of my stitches. So I'll probably redo it, but you get the idea of how it works. And here is an example of the diamonds that I have already completed and I'm still working on that make up this beautiful insanity quilt. So a little bit done and a lot more to go. Let me know if you have any tips, tricks, or suggestions. I would really appreciate it. Thank you so much for watching. I appreciate it so much. It is always an honor to have you here and for you to spend a little bit of your valuable time with me and my crafting journey. I would love it if you would subscribe to my channel, especially if you enjoyed this video and want to see more in the future. I am trying to put a regular schedule on the books and be uploading at 5 p.m. Eastern time on Tuesdays and holding myself to that regular cadence. If you liked this video, give it a thumbs up. Definitely leave me a comment too. That really is my favorite part of the YouTube community and I answer every single one of them. Thank you again for being here and I will see you next time. Happy sewing. Bye-bye.